All right, picking up where we left off um, with examples of linear algebra ideas in the vector space Pn. So let's suppose that um, we have this subset of Pn, which is all of the polynomials that are 0 at a certain value c. So all of the polynomials that actually cross the x-axis at some x fixed x value c. So is this a subset? And if so, what is its dimension? Well. You know, checking if something is a subset requires, if you do it by hand, so to speak, there's, there are three things to check, and they can be a fair amount of work. You have to check that, it's zero, that it contains the zero vector and that it is closed under addition and multiplication. But another way to do it is, right, we know that if you have a linear transformation, its image is a subspace, and also its, uh, its kernel is a subspace. And since we have something going to 0, it, it kind of feels like maybe this is the kernel of a linear transformation. What would that linear transformation be? So, you know, if, if there is such a linear transformation, what does it do to f? Well, one thing that we could, one thing that we could do to a polynomial is just plug in a value. Well, what value? Let's plug in the value c. Right, so this is a map from the polynomials of degree less than or equal to n to the real numbers, right? Because when you plug the value c into a polynomial, the result is some real number. So this is a function. The question is, is it a linear transformation? So if we had a linear combination of two different polynomials, say f and g, so a times f plus uh, b times g, is this the same thing as a times t of f plus b times t of g? See, this way we only have, we only have one thing to check. We just need to check that, um, that the linear transformation property holds. Well, t of af plus bg, this is af plus bg evaluated at the number x, or at the number c. But what is that? Well, it's a times f of c plus b times g of c. Right? This, is, this is the definition of vector addition and scalar multiplication in uh, the vector space p sub n. All right, well, what about this side? Uh, but that's exactly the same thing. So. Uh, so the, this function is a linear transformation since it satisfies the characteristic property of linear transformations. The second thing to notice is that uh, this subset, S sub C, is exactly the kernel of this linear transformation. Right? Every polynomial in this set is a polynomial that when you plug C into it, you get zero. But these are exactly the, right, this is T of F right here. So this is really just the kernel of, of our linear transformation t. So is this a subspace? Well, yes, because it's the kernel of a transformation. So this is a subspace of p sub n. All right, well, what is the dimension of this subspace? That's, a, that's kind of a tricky question. You know, in general, to, to find the dimension of this subspace by hand, we'd have to find a basis for this subspace, and it's not totally clear how to do that. Um, but another way to find the dimension of this subspace, right, this subspace is the kernel of a linear transformation. We could use the rank nullity relationship for, uh, for this linear transformation. We know that the dimension of the kernel of t plus the dimension of the image of t is the dimension of the domain space. And the domain space is p sub n. Now, we know the dimension of p sub n already. We calculated that. That's n plus 1. Uh, the dimension of the kernel, that's what we don't know. And what about the dimension of the image? Well, what is the image? The image is, well, the, do, the range vector space is the real numbers. So I guess the question is, um, so the possible dimensions for the image are either 0 or 1, because the dimension of r is 1. 
well, those are the only two options. If the image is, if the dimension of the image is zero, that would mean the only, uh, the only number in the image of this map is zero. But clearly there are polynomials that when you evaluate them at C don't give you zero. So the, the uh, image of this map can't be just zero, so it has to be all of R. And that means that this dimension is one. So now we can just solve this equation for the unknown dimension. The dimension of the kernel of this map is just n. And remember, the kernel of the map, that was s sub c. That was the subspace that we were looking for. So the dimension of the subspace is actually just n.